Hi everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about a very common yet under-recognized condition known as notalgia parasthetica. So in this lesson we're going to talk about what this condition is, why it happens, and we're going to talk about some of the signs and symptoms, how it's diagnosed, and how it's treated. So notalgia parasthetica is a chronic neuropathic condition involving dysesthesia on the back. Dysesthesia is just a fancy way of saying that there is an abnormal sensation on the back. This actually leads to an abnormal sensation of itching. So the back becomes very itchy. It's actually a common cause of chronic itching or pruritus on the back. Now, the etiology and pathophysiology for why this occurs is unknown, but it is believed to be due to impingement or irritation or damage to sensory branches of certain thoracic nerves, in, in particular thoracic nerves 2 to 6 in some cases. So in this area here on the back, T2 to T6 is where it's most commonly going to occur. And some other proposed mechanisms suggest that there's abnormal firing of these itch generating neurons. And there's some issue with an abnormal itch control mechanism. So for whatever reason, there's going to be some issues with these particular thoracic nerves that's going to lead to a chronic intermittent itching sensation. So this is actually a condition that's going to more likely occur in older age groups. So as a patient gets older, they're more likely to have this condition. It's more likely to occur in middle-aged females as opposed to males. But again, older age is going to be the most significant risk factor here. Now, the prevalence of this condition is not entirely known. It's not a very well-recognized condition, as we mentioned before, but it is estimated to cause 8% of cases of chronic pruritus of the back. So if there's an issue with itching on the back, this is a very common cause of itching of the back, especially in older patients. So this is something that one should think about when thinking about an itchy back. Now let's talk about the signs and symptoms and where the itching occurs. So with notalgia parasthetica, the main symptom is going to be pruritus or itching. It's going to be chronic, as we mentioned before, which means that it's going to occur for many years. It can occur for only months in some patients, but oftentimes it's going to occur for many years. And it's going to be intermittent. It can come and go, this itching sensation in the back. And there is also a sensation of what is known as allonesis. So allonesis is a sensation where even things that shouldn't cause itching or an itching sensation do. So if there's even some mild touching of that area, it can lead to an itching sensation. It can lead to the patient feeling itchy in that area of the back. Now, what's going to be most commonly found with this condition is that it's going to be unilateral. It's going to be one-sided. So it's going to be more on one side of the back than the other. And what's interesting is that it's often going to be on the opposite side to the dominant hand. So if the dominant hand that an individual uses is the right hand, it's oftentimes going to be on the left side of the back. It's going to be on the opposite side. And then it's oftentimes going to be on the lower aspect or the inferior aspect of the scapula. The scapula is the shoulder blade. So it's going to be in this area right here, and oftentimes it's going to be in the medial aspect of that area. So it's going to be right in the middle, more to one side and near the shoulder blade. And it's going to be a very annoying, very persistent chronic itching sensation. So this is going to be something that's very common in many patients. And it's not often recognized or understood. I have to mention here that it can occur bilaterally sometimes. It can occur on both sides. So Oftentimes, it's going to be on one side, unilateral, but it can be bilateral in some cases. Now, some patients can describe a numbness and tingling sensation as well. So not only will they have an itching sensation, but they can have some paresthesia-like symptoms. So numbness and tingling can happen as well. There can be some pain that can be elicited as well. So they may have allodynia. Allodynia is where a non-painful stimulus, so even just a very light touch on that area, may feel painful in that area for the patient. There can be some experience of abnormal heat or cold in that particular area, and there can be some hyperesthesia, so it can feel very sensitive to touch. And there may be some feeling of a foreign body as well. So there can be some odd sensory stimuli from that particular area of the back, but oftentimes it's going to be pruritus or an itching sensation that is chronic and intermittent. It's also important to note that the itchy back is not going to have a primary skin lesion. So there's not going to be anything that shows up when you actually look at the back. The patient's just going to report that the back is itchy in that area. So nothing on the skin, but 
what we do know is that if there is chronic itching in that area, there can be skin changes from the itching. So there can be secondary skin lesions. So secondary skin lesions can occur from chronic scratching of the area. These can include hyperpigmentation, so the skin that is affected that has been scratched repeatedly over many months or years can become darker in coloration. Lichenification can also occur. This is where there's a thickening of the skin. That can also occur in areas where chronic itching has occurred as well. And because of the itching, there's going to be excoriation. So excoriations are scratch marks. So you can see those in that particular area we talked about before. So again, if you actually look at this area, here's the shoulder blade and in and around this area. And it's going to be on the lower two thirds of the shoulder blade or the scapula. And it's going to be medial. It's going to be closer to the midline of the patient. So it's going to be an annoying itch that occurs in between the shoulder blades. It's going to be difficult for the patient to reach and it's going to be something that is quite annoying for the patient. So how is this condition diagnosed and treated? So the diagnosis of this condition is often going to be a clinical diagnosis. Again, this is often a condition that can go unrecognized. In clinics, there have been cases where a patient will come in and feel itchy, and they will believe that it is due to dry skin. But it is actually this condition. It can be something like Natalgia parasthetica that can be the cause of the itching sensation. So it's something to think about when there is a chronic itch on the back. Imaging is not required. There's nothing that's going to show up in imaging, but if there are other signs and symptoms that may be reflective of another condition, imaging may be utilized to rule out those other conditions. So how is this condition treated? Oftentimes a clinician may suggest antihistamines or a patient may try antihistamines, but they won't work. They actually don't work in this condition. They won't actually relieve the itching sensation. But what can help are topical steroids. So topical steroids can be used in some patients. They can often provide some relief of symptoms, but they may not always help and they will not last if the topical steroids are removed or stopped. Topical capsaicin can also be utilized as well. This does show some relief of symptoms, but once a patient does stop using topical capsaicin, the benefits from their use do often tend to go away. So the topical capsaicin is only used as a temporary relief from the symptoms. Because this is a nerve issue, gabapentin can also be used. Gabapentin has been shown to have some relief of these symptoms. Topical NSAIDs or topical non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like diclofenac can also be used. These have also been shown to provide some relief to patients as well. And then oral NSAIDs like ibuprofen may be used in some cases, although these are going to be more often avoided because oftentimes it's going to be a chronic issue, so you don't want to use NSAIDs chronically due to their side effects like gastric ulcers and issues with increasing blood pressure and issues on the kidneys. Now there are some other modalities that can be employed to help treat this condition. These include exercises. So exercising particular muscles on the back like the latissimus dorsi muscles, this seems to play a role in helping the patient with some of the signs and symptoms from this condition. Acupuncture use has also been shown to help relieve or reduce some of the symptoms from this condition. And then Botox or botulinum toxin administration has also been shown to help relieve some of the symptoms from this condition as well. Although again, these are oftentimes going to be temporary reliefs. So I hope you found this lesson helpful. This is actually a very interesting and important condition to recognize as it is probably very unrecognized. And because it goes unrecognized, it's probably going to be something that can cause a lot of annoyance to patients who experience it, especially if they don't know what the condition is and don't know what the particular treatments that can help are. So if you want to learn more about other medical conditions, please check out my many other lessons. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time.